Good morning, everybody. I'm Nathan Doty, CEO of Asight. I'm, I'm here to talk to you this morning about uh, engineering digital twins for a vibrant society. So um, a little background about me. I, I've been with Asight uh, for nearly 20 years. I was the um, original founding CTO, so the guy who started building the platform at Asight. I've worn quite a few different hats over the years and uh, within, the, within the group and, and most recently CEO. Prior to Asight, I was um, also in construction technology. Um, my, my, uh, my background to get to that point was um, basically a, a typical American dilettante style of, of education, doing a little bit of everything, studying computer science, architecture, urban planning, and then finally getting a degree in English literature. <laughs> so um, a non-traditional um, background perhaps, but one that I feel has um, helped me to have a a broader perspective on, on what we do together as an industry. We've got a bit of a, a, a big picture um, to talk about here this morning from, from, from me, um, leaving aside uh, some of the levels of detail which are fundamental to how we all come together and collaborate to deliver a, a, you know, a better built environment. I want to talk at, at, a, at a high level about the outcomes that we can all achieve together to improve you know, our, our built environment around us and the infrastructure that underpins that uh, so that we can all you know, leverage and make better use of that to, uh, to have a more vibrant society together. And that's right the way across, across the world uh, in, you know, in every economy, um, whether it's fully developed or developing um, at every level. So digital engineering is, is a, a major um, theme for what we at A-Site and we in the broader built environment are trying to deliver. Um, but what does it actually mean? Um, I mean, fundamentally, you know, we, we know what engineering is, or there's, you know, we, we know that there are uh, a variety of different disciplines within engineering, from civil engineering to structural engineering to electrical to mechanical, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So the practice of engineers in effectively designing and, and making things, if I can use that word, is well, well understood um, and ever evolving um, and, and a very professionalized um, uh, discipline uh, within, within, our, within our industry. So digital engineering quite simply is the digitization of that practice. Right? So when we work to create, deliver and make these things around us, the buildings that we're in, uh, the roads that we drive on, we deliver an asset which gets operated, but what we also need in, in modern times to be focused on delivering at the same time is the digital version, or, or what, we, what, we, what we call the digital twin of that asset. Stepping back from a process perspective, you know, what you're basically saying is that we're, we're now requiring of our engineering discipline not only to design this thing, but to also create the data architecture, the data, that underpins it, that is the digital representation of that thing. That's quite an ask, that's a big ask because the discipline of computer science, uh, software engineering, data science, these disciplines um, are, you know, have heretofore been pretty much wholly di different and separate from you know, traditional engineering. We're, tra we're talking about melding and, and blending these two things together into one, into one practice. So that's a, that's a major shift in our industry, um, and one that's, you know, you know, I'd say at the beginning or near the beginning and, and ongoing. This idea of digital engineering is not like a light switch that we can flip. Uh, it's not a snap your fingers, instant change. Right? It's a journey, um, and it's a journey that not not one individual will take alone, but that we all, as collaborators, colleagues. Uh, industry peers um, and, and project team members will take together over time. So I, I, I've highlighted uh, here in, in the presentation today um, a few key uh, areas of technological focus um, that, that we see in the industry that all, you know, all have a part to play in this journey. I'm going to talk about you know, five of those today. Um, and there's, there's, they're, they're, they're flowing kind of one into the other um, in, in my view. In, in the, you know, mirroring the life cycle of the built asset. Starting with BIM, building information modeling, um, moving to talk about advanced building materials, the things that we build with, right? 
Um, a little bit on modern methods of construction, um, you know, effectively the manufacturingization um, of, of the building um, trade, um, delivering smart buildings, which can be connected to the digital twin, right? I.e., the, the work product of this data science uh, approach to, to the building trade. The fundamental underlying definition of BIM that sticks and resonates with me is always this semantic description of your building, right? So, and that semantic, you know, can be a, a, a fancy word, uh, but it just basically means meaning, right? So, a meaningful, structured database that underpins your building, right? Many people correctly also point out that BIM is not just a thing, right, a database. It's also a process, right? It's also the um, process of how we all come together and collaborate, collaborative BIM, to build that, that meaningful database. One of the uh, catchphrases that we all have, have heard and, um, uh, and really resonates with me as well uh, is, is this idea of effectively the golden thread. So when, whilst we're in this process, of uh, building up and collaborating and changing our, the way we work in order to achieve a meaningful structured database. We are effectively building the beginnings of, from the very early phases of conceptual design. We're building the beginnings of this golden thread that will snake its way right through the process until we're actually living in and, and inhabiting the physical infrastructure around us. Right? Um, and being able to connect back to that idea that we started with and the data that got added in when you know the trade contractor came on to site to install the doors right it's, you know for example so that idea of the golden thread begins here with with the process that we put in place to work together to define data one of the key um, underlying themes of this process change is that we've got the physical and we've got the digital in order to be effective they need to be intertwined so you know how do we do that? There's, there's, there's a lot going on you know, around us you know, in terms of uh, the efficiencies of our process, pressures on us from procurement, um, you know, changing worlds around us and changes in the way that we use space due to COVID-19 and, and other, you know, other, other concerns globally. Um, paramount amongst those is you know, the impact of, of our built environment on sustainability and on the environment of the world. One of the key areas of innovation here uh, that we see is in you know, the actual materials that we use. The significant portion of us who are in the, the product and building materials spaces, we are seeing some sig significant improvements, both in terms of you know, the manufacturing processes that, that generate these materials, but also you know, the, the ecological impact of them. Uh, but all the way right through to you know, baking in the idea from the beginning of the manufacturing process that this physical thing, right, whether it's a roof tile or a door, you know, window lintel or a door frame, this physical thing will need to be connected to the digital world as well. So then if you have that idea from the beginning, you can take steps in your manufacturing process to uh, embed sensors, embed uh, the ability to emit and receive data feeds or data flows. Let's just remember that you know, across this whole life cycle, you know, every um, every uh, participant in the supply chain has a, has a significant part to play in digitizing. So we got the idea of a database from the beginning. We've got the manufacturing and product centric elements of the construction process starting to you know think about digitizing their materials from the beginning. And then we start to look at how is it that we actually come to site and build you know, the building or, or um, the expo hall or, or you know, do the road works that we need to do. Now, particularly when we're talking structures, um, we, we all, who, you know, those of us who've studied architecture uh, in our industry uh, or design uh, will know that we come from you know, centuries of tradition wherein the, um, the archetypal uh, idea of the designer and architect was this kind of uh, renaissance builder, right? Who effectively owns the process from the beginning and 
uh, is really creating a unique and artisanal um, work, of, work of art, effectively. In the modern world, um, the challenge that we face here with, with digitizing, I think, is that we need to still maintain our ability as humans to express ourselves through our built environment, but also incorporate more modern ways of working, i.e. manufacturing. Uh, there's a lot of body of, of work out there that is concerned with how we can take the construction industry and, and bring in you know, more repeatable ways of building the things that we, that we build. So off-site construction, prefab components that can be brought onto site and effectively stitched together like Lego. Uh, all of these things um, have more than just practical use. What they have, they, what they also do is they regularize the process by which we build, which enables us to um, you know, better predict outcomes. Right? And again, back to my kind of basic thesis here, better build in the ability to marry data to that, to that process. If you have a database and you have smart building materials and you're using a regular predictable manufacturing-based construction approach, you can then produce smart buildings, right? So what is a smart building? I mean, it's quite simply, again, a building or, or any infrastructural asset that has the ability to connect to data, right? To send data and to receive data about itself and about its environment and about the occupants of the building. Uh, the, the Internet of Things um, is you know, a term that we've all heard. Uh, is the, the idea that you know, every asset or every significant asset within the building that I'm in today uh, has that bi-directional data receiving and, and sending functionality baked into its very core. And once we effectively have that as a network, uh, we then have the ability to link that back to the data model, right, to the BIM. That linkage now between the smart building and the data model or the database, the, the BIM, is what enables us to deliver what, what we're all trying to deliver here, a digital twin. So the difference between a BIM model um, and a digital twin is quite simply that that digital twin is connected to the asset, where if something changes in the real world, the digital version or digital twin can be informed of that. If there's information in the digital twin about, say, the warranty of a, of a desk that we installed into a space, that can be picked up in the physical world by the actual facilities maintenance woman who's on site to, you know, to look after the desks, right? And, and that, that kind of connectedness is, what we're, is what's, what, what's um, the signature of a digital twin. And it really brings that golden thread all the way through from the idea where we started into you know, the operation of where we are right now, the building that we're in today. There's a lot of moving parts there, and I've only picked a few really headline, um, quite well-known areas of technology that are important to this. There's so much detail. There's been, I've seen personally over the past 20 years so much good work by you know, so many different types of people, from technologists to builders to engineers to commercial people all, all across the board, in effectively defining how we might work together, how we might collaborate more effectively um, using standardized approaches and using um, you know, commonly understood or shared standards for, for communication, both you know, verbal, traditional communication as well as digital communication. So what, what I see that the industry really needs in order to enable this um, is, is one common platform. And that platform needs to be open. It needs to effectively be from a, from a data or geeky technologist perspective, it needs to be an open ability to send and receive and capture and store, share and collaborate all the data that we're, that we're generating. Uh, that's not something that I believe that's going to be um, you know, uh, successfully created and delivered as a proprietary platform. It needs to be something that is open and available um, and you know, um, doesn't lock in the industry. And it needs to be based on these open standards, both in terms of communication as well as data structures themselves. So that platformization of what the industry needs, I see as the kind of the next big thing, um, you know, uh, you know, industry 4.0 for the construction industry. We talk about enterprise service bus, which is as a technology, the ability to build connectors that are open to any type of system. I see that 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 
idea needs to be expanded out to become the industry service bus for the built environment. Um, and and you know, it's part of our mission um, and my personal mission to, to do our part and uh, try and help the industry, you know, all of us get, get to that point. Uh, but as I said, it's not just one of us, it's, it's all of us that need, need to be involved. The outcome of that, um, I believe and, and hope, um, is that we can build more vibrant, you know, better for all of us, better to live in, more supportive of our people, friendlier to the, to the, you know, to the Earth's environment, um, and more resilient societies, right? Shelter, um, food and water, right? The three basic necessities of human life. Uh, and our industry is about delivering one of those, right? Shelter. Um, so fundamentally, the more effectively and more efficiently we do that to encourage all of us to share these spaces and live together better makes us more resilient. Um, and resilience has taken on you know, new meaning and new impact this year globally because of you know, what we're all going through with COVID and lockdowns. Uh, and I know, you know changes that you put in place today, you may not see them take effect immediately. They may not be in effect tomorrow, but if you start to act and start to bring these ideas in, then next year, you know, two or three years down the road, we start to see results coming into play in the actual physical world that we create. Um, and that to me is, is you know, super exciting. That's it for me. Thanks for, thanks for listening and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.